As you hold up the bracelet, the ghosts seem to relax slightly. You wonder if it is now safe to approach them and enter the cemetery. You place the bracelet on the grave. It immediately sinks down into the earth. The ghosts do not respond at first. Then one of them drifts toward you. It nods, almost sadly. The ghost seems to want to say something, but appears unable. Its face, though transparent and hazy, is lined with grief and torment. Its facial features waver into focus. The ghost is female. She understand that our daughter will never be joining us now. No longer do we need wait for her. Now we journey to the realm of the dead, where its lord waits to judge us. Farewell. You bow your head and cross your heart out of respect. While looking downward, you notice that a beautiful gold ring now lies at your feet. You lift the gold ring from the ground and carefully place it in your pocket. Lord Herbert and Lady Lillian, 1646 to 1668, loving parents of Anastasia, beloved son and daughter-in-law of Count Caldor and Countess Lavidia, our enemies be warned, their untimely deaths shall be avenged. Kitty, 1500 to 1510. Sudden did the illness come upon sweet Kitty, no longer young. There is nothing more that can be done. Her lives are up. She's had her fun. Mary Ann Drinkwater, 1230 to 1266. They had traveled safely for many a day until crossing a bridge along their way. She lost her balance and fell to her fate. He tried to save her, but it was too late. Douglas Buckmaster, 995 to 1020. The noise, said he, is far too loud as he discerned the maddened crowd. The mob broke in, then he did scream, I'd rather this a sight unseen. They strung him up from toe to head, and as for after, enough's been said. Susanna Somnia, 1195 to 1265. He had put her to bed after she'd had supper, but forgot next morning to stir and wake up her. Samuel, you believe. 1255 to 1300. This young man sought to be holy, to save himself from being lowly. He joined the hood and wore their cloth, eventually died from professional sloth. Princess Leia, 56 to 83. During labor, she used too much force. Boris and Olga. There was an old couple named Olga and Stovich, who in truth made quite a nice pair. They lived with each other for many long years, till they wound up in each other's hair. Date of death, 1567. Alfred Chamberlain, 810 to 810. He'd not seen his first sunrise, felt not the warmth of dawn. All who saw him wept and cried, to this world he'd come stillborn. Count Bartholomew Scrooge, 1017 to 1101. To warnings he would pay no mind. Of his failing, ailing health, his relatives they'd bide their time. After all, he had great wealth. Jacob Scarlet, 1354 to 1411. He would not rise from out of bed, not even to soothe his aching head. Should have heeded what the doctor said. It's too late now, for he is dead. Count Christopher Evere, 1175 to 1200. The young Evere, his time so near, said he, my dear, lend me your ear. Please do not fear, my life ends here.
You stop digging when your shovel hits something hard. Nervously, you reach down, open the coffin, and look inside. You search through the belongings of the deceased. According to the headstone, they belong to a Count Christopher Evere. After some tentative searching, you find a parchment. It appears to be the last will and testament of Larman Odnarb, healer. Hmm, this isn't right. You run your eyes over the parchment. It's dated 1200, the same as the date on the headstone. However, the instructions pertaining to his burial were for Larman to be placed near his family at the church's cemetery. Oh dear. This grave is centrally located within the cemetery. A stone gargoyle rests atop it. You see the name on the headstone and swallow hard. It says, Count Kaldar. Died 1646. Though you did not think it possible, you suddenly feel a lot colder. You climb back into the decrepit rowboat, and the shrouded ghoul ferries you back across the lake. You lift the pillow and look beneath it. To your surprise, you discover a small bottle of ointment. A label on the side reads, Wolfbane. Being very careful not to smash it, you take the ointment and put it in your pocket. You have no reason to look through these old drawers. The bed is indeed as soft as it looks. The bed is much too small for you. Besides, you're not tired yet. There's no time for sitting around, Graham. Your heart beats faster and faster as you push on the handle of the church door. It opens and you nervously step inside.
A large tapestry now adorns the wall behind the altar. The image on the tapestry bears a depiction of some kind of ceremony or ritual. It is somehow reminiscent of the room you are now standing in. You see a book sitting on the altar. It appears old and worn. You look over the book. It is a journal written by Lowulf, head monk of the Church of Kalima. Flipping through it, you see a paragraph with a name you recognize. You turn a few more pages and choose another interesting looking paragraph. The journal largely contains many entries of similar types and of daily matters of a monk's life. You are about to replace the journal where you found it, but your eye catches a most peculiar passage. The passage ends abruptly. Though there are many pages left to be written on, it is evident that the final passage was written a number of years ago. How strange. You replace the journal, putting it back where you found it. Evidently, someone stands at the center of the symbol, as you can see some hair on that part of the floor. You have no need for a robe. Besides, it seems to have a lot of hair on it. You'd get a skin irritation. Larman Adnarb, 1175 to 1200. Dear old Larman was a healer, cured many a deadly fever. One he caught that bitter day, healed not himself and passed away. You have no... You stop digging when your shovel hits something hard. With bated breath, you open the box. There it is, the tiara. As you retrieve the tiara from its final resting place, you let out a loud, relieved sigh. You feel as if the coming sunrise will be the most glorious sight you will ever behold considering how close you were to never seeing another again. Now don't delay, you still have to get it back to the castle.
You freeze as a wolf's howl sends shivers down your spine. You force yourself to turn and face... Nothing. Your anxiety must be causing you to hear things. You think that this vial contains the potion of youth. You rub the wolfbane ointment all over your skin. Without warning, a wolf darts out of the dark forest and dashes towards you, and this time it's running directly at you. Sensing the wolf main ointment on your skin, the wolf quickly turns and flees back into the forest. The wolf main ointment has worn off. You read the second swift where You second swift were wisely spent, searching everywhere we went. Something is wrong here. There is no boat, no boatman, and... No escape. The monk and his pack have tracked you here, and they clearly intend to do nothing less than rip you to pieces. If you're going to do something, now would be a very good time. You tug forcefully at one of the reeds until it finally breaks free. You put it away and carry it with you. Very carefully, you bend down and soak the tip of the needle in the foul, toxic water. The silver needle fits perfectly into the end of this hollow reed, making a sturdy pea shooter. 
The coating of deadly poison makes the needle a lethal projectile. I see you have met the Brotherhood of the Pack. Where were you? Detained. A man who had assumed your appearance boarded my boat. When we reached the other side, I perceived the flaws of his disguise and dispatched him instantly. The Count has been wary of the Brotherhood of the Pack for many years now. In obtaining what he asked for and ridding this land of their leader, you have served him doubly well this night. The shrouded ghoul paddles across the toxic lake to the shore on the other side. You re-enter the huge wooden doors and quickly make your way to the castle's main dining room. As expected, you find the Count and Countess awaiting you. You have performed admirably. Not only have you found the tiara I sought, you have rid me and this land of the deceptive and secretive Brotherhood of the Pack. They have committed many atrocities against my family, such as the deaths of our son and daughter-in-law. I have been forced to remain secluded all these years, unable to serve my homeland as I should, to evade the relentless pursuit of wiping out my entire family line. Is the Brotherhood really gone? Some of those wolves escaped. The rest of the pack followed the wolves that ambushed you. However, without their leader, they will find themselves as lost in mind as they are now in body. Whether human, wolf, or any other form, their hastened passage through my swamp will not see a return to their den. Of that I can assure you. You have trapped them all in the swamp? The entire pack? An endless flight through the mire awaits them. Should my long stilled heart ever feel pity again, perhaps one day I shall free them. As you listen to the Count's cold, unforgiving tone, you thank your lucky stars that he no longer sees you as a threat, at least not for the time being. I release you from my service, dear King. The nearing dawn no longer signifies an uncertain future for you. You take the death, Jim. Finally, you have all three stones in your possession. You feel a pang of anticipation as you realize that all you need to do now is take them to the door of destiny. The Countess has nothing more to say to you at the moment. You said you were the former Lord of Kalima? Yes. When did you abdicate? I didn't, as such. When I became what I am now, ruling this realm lost all meaning to me. All that mattered was the well-being of my dearest treasure. You flatter me. It is well deserved. All that mattered to me was her safety. I concerned myself with little else. And now? I have recently given thought to... But no, it is a foolish notion to entertain. The people would never accept me as I am now. Your statue in the town still stands. The people obviously hold you in high regard even after all the years of your absence. Hmm... Perhaps. However, my concern right now is the safety of my family. I have taken steps to ensure that they are better protected from our enemies. 
The Count has nothing more to say to you at the moment. I wish you the best, dear King. A word of advice, King Graham. Once you have found the lady you seek, protect her with all your strength. Never leave her side and place no importance above that of her well-being. Give your life for hers if it should ever come to that. Love can last an eternity, but your loved one can be lost in an instant. Heed those words, my king, and farewell. This is a grand old private library. You can imagine that the literature contained herein would make the town library pale in comparison. The bookcases extend all the way to the high ceiling. This marble bust must be of a past count. While it has some resemblance to the current one, the face looks markedly different from that of the town statue. You climb back into the decrepit rowboat, and the shrouded ghoul ferries you back across the lake. He... did what? Uh, well... It would appear that our Count's loyalty was to be questioned after all. Keldor has decided to leave us, now that he again has his wife at his side. No one has ever done my service before. Yes, Father, it is most regrettable. It is unthinkable! Yes, Father, it is quite unthinkable. It is up to you then, Sister Agatha. Yes, Father. It is... Uh, a pardon? You will have to deal with him yourself. If Graham dies abroad, the crown will pass to me. And with it, the item will be known to me at long last. Father, are you sure? It is an ancient legend. It does exist, and I will find it! Do you hear me, Agatha? Graham is not to return to Daventry alive! The swamp seems a bit lighter than the last time you were here, and some of the heavy mist has lifted. Day must be dawning. <laughs> 